Six News 4 continues to follow that breaking news after two officers were hurt. The Sky Zoom 4 video you see is from South City where the bike officers hit each other during a procession for a fallen officer. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Courtney Bryant. And I'm Steve Savard. News 4 has learned that one of the officers hurt is with the St. Charles County Police Department while the other serves in Webster Groves. Both were escorting the body of Officer Michael Langsdorf to a funeral home. The crash took place just after three at the intersection of Jameson and Lansdowne. News source Kim St. Ange is live outside Barnes Jewish Hospital following new developments about the officer's injuries. Kim. Both of those officers are being treated right here at Barnes Jewish. We just heard from the St. Charles County Chief who tells us both of them are expected to be okay. The St. Charles County officer received some pretty serious injuries. He actually hit his head when these two bikes collided and it was actually a pretty incredible uh, moment here. Of course, with these two officers being taken in by ambulance this afternoon, we saw well over two dozen officers from all across the metro who were here in support of these two officers and of course their wives are also also here by their side as they are continuing to be treated. I want to take it back to the scene, give you an idea of what this looked like. Again, happened around three o'clock this afternoon on the south side of town on Chippewa. That's near Ted Drews. Both officers riding motorcycles as part of that funeral procession for Officer Langsdorf this afternoon. Again, when they somehow clipped their bikes and went down, this video uh, from Sky Zoom Forum really shows you how many officers rushed to their side to treat them before that ambulance pulled up. Both taken to Barnes and police were able to block off a lot of the intersections to help them get the ambulances here quicker. The St. Charles County officer has been identified as Corporal Rob Bell. He has been with the department for 10 years and like I mentioned, he took the, far, the hardest fall, really hit his head and the chief says there's also a chance he may have broken his leg. His wife is an officer, so that's a double issue. Uh, so, you know, this isn't a thing that they expect, and she's an officer with Winsfeld. So, so it's a double-edged sword. It, it could be the other way around with him coming to her. It's not just us, so we're glad nobody else was hurt, uh, and we're glad the we're very pleased that the officer is going to recover. By the way, I asked the chief if the officer's wife, who is also an officer with Wensville, if she was part of that procession, he said no, she's fine, but again, is here. By the way, the Webster officer who was involved with this crash has not been identified. Uh, he is likely going to be released today, is what the St. Charles County Chief is telling us. He says at this point, it looks like his officer will likely be here through the night getting treated. Live at Barnes, Kim St. Ange, News 4. Family and friends will begin saying their final goodbyes to Officer Langsdorf on Sunday. A wake is scheduled at Hoffmeister Colonial Mortuary on Chippewa. That will run from noon until 6. We have all the services information online at KMOV.com and the KMOV News app. On both, you'll also find ways you can help Officer Langsdorf's family. New tonight, just days before the Pride Fest parade in downtown St. Louis, the Grand Marshal has dropped out. The Metro Trans Umbrella Group was selected to lead, but has decided not to participate after a decision was made to allow uniformed police officers to march. News Force Russell Kinsall is getting answers. He's live tonight along the parade route. Right now, final preparations are underway for Sunday's Pride Fest parade. I'm standing at the corner of 15th and Market along the parade route. Streets here are going to be filled with floats and celebration. Now, the parade on Sunday will have a focus on honoring the transgender community, even though many from that community are not going to be here to see it. I mean, we were cautiously optimistic, uh, excited-ish, but nervous. When the Metro Trans Umbrella Group accepted the honor to be the Grand Marshal of the 2019 Pride Fest parade, a decision had been made to not allow uniformed police officers to walk in the parade. Last week, that decision was reversed. Continuing to include police in the parade helps to build trust, helps to build understanding, helps to build respect, and helps to build inclusion. The parade will mark the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising, a violent clash between protesters and police following raids on a Greenwich Village gay bar in New York. Two transgender women are said to have begun the uprising, and trans community members say their relationship with police is still a troubled one. We had a lot of community conversations, and we really just came up with the, we cannot uh, be complacent or contribute to our own oppression by marching with armed uh, uniformed police officers. Yes, I'm sad that they put out the Grand Marshal, but we're still going to honor a trans community because they're part of our LGBTQI community here in St. Louis. Trans community members would rather focus on the discrimination faced when trying to find a place to live or to meet other basic needs. 
healthcare, being able to get access to quality affirming healthcare is a problem, is a barrier. 30% of us are living in some sort of poverty. Uh, housing is a major issue. Coincidentally, the trans community have been planning a celebration of their own long before deciding to not be in that parade. It's been called a joyful march. It's for people who are transgender, gender neutral, or nonconformist. It starts tomorrow at 6 o'clock at the corner of Oregon and Arsenal and will go south to Benton Park. That's tomorrow, Friday. Live downtown, Russell Kinsell, News 4.